All right, guys, so the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you unpack the footage and the music from the included zip file at chichicheka.com slash downloads. Of course, it's just some 1080p footage at 120 frames per second. You guys can use whatever slow motion footage you want. Just make sure that you capture it at the highest frame rate of whatever camera you have available to you right now. Even iPhones look good. Just make sure it's like 120 to like 240 frames per second to have the most silky smooth effect. You're also going to want to choose a song. In my opinion, the most cool songs at this moment are kind of lo-fi chill hip-hop beats so i'm gonna use this by lakey inspired it, it gives this stuff out copyright free as long as you mention him in your description so i'm just gonna use his song called island check him out if you want links are in the description okay so now let's jump into premiere once you have those files all ready let's just do a new project most of you guys said that 4k was a little harsh on your computer so i'm just gonna make this 1080p right now and i'm gonna call this slide seek Hit OK. Let's go down to this blank canvas area in the bottom left where it says import media. Double click. Find the footage that you want to use, which just so happens to be these four at the very bottom here. Then I'm just going to click and drag all the footage and the music to the right side, which will create a new sequence for me. And now this music, I'm going to drag out and do oblivion here because we're not messing with it yet. So what we want to do is we want to make it around three to eight seconds. I'd say the lower, the better. Just for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to make it about an eight second edit. I'm going to zoom in using the A key here. I'm going to first start with this funny dance I did. <laughs> A shout out to my wife for taking this awesome footage, helping me out for my tutorial. Okay, now we're going to hit C to cut. And then we're going to hit D for ripple delete. Then we're going to move forward until I stop doing this weird dance here. About right here. Hit C. Then I'm going to hit ripple delete again. So now we're not going to be using the audio. So if we select all the footage, zoom in a bit using the A key and then right click on any of the footage, go up to unlink. Then we can just select the audio and hit delete. Zoom in once again using the A key. We can start adding slow motion to these effects, but let's actually drag each of these to their own layers. Then right click on the video, speed slash duration, and we're gonna make this 30% and that will slow it down by 30%. Just because I don't know how long I want each of these to be, I'm just gonna hit play. That's pretty cool. Okay, and then at that point, we don't need it anymore, so I'm gonna go to that, drag this over. I'm just doing some quick basic edits. I've, I've covered this in other tutorials, so. Now we're gonna right click once again, go up to speed slash duration, make this one about 50%. That should be good. We don't want this to be too long, that's what she said. That's good enough, you get the idea. And hit C, ripple delete that mother cuss. Speed slash duration again. And this one we're gonna make 30%. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna click and drag these down. And now we have all of our footage nice and edited down at about nine to 10 seconds. So the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is hit the S key to zoom out, select all of these and drag them back a little bit. Now we're gonna drag this music forward and we're gonna zoom in using the A key. And we're just gonna find a spot that we want the effect to come in and start. Like, yeah, you see how that, how that starts on that, like that bass drop. Always find a bass drop for these transitions to start on because it always looks way better. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in more, click and drag it. Just get it as close as possible because even that will look legit. Okay, and then it ends. So that actually turned out really, really good. Uh, so these edits will be super easy. If I zoom in here using the A key, and then we select our audio here, and we make a cut with the C key, then select where it bass drops again here, select the audio and hit C, and actually trim this to where that bass drop comes back in. Now we're gonna go up to the effects panel here and make sure that our premiere is in the effects window mode. Then we're gonna go up to the effects panel here and just type in low and find low pass within the audio effects. Now we click and drag that onto the back portion of the audio. 
And if we hit the S key and we zoom out, we can also click and drag the low pass onto the front part of our effect. And then we can hit Shift Z to apply a, a fade on our audio. Hit A to zoom in. I'm gonna make that fade in a little bit more. Now, okay, we know that. You see that, how the, the music goes clean, 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 and then on the last bass drop, it goes lo-fi. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And it looks like it's actually clipping. So if we zoom in and actually bring the track completely down there, so maybe lower the volume one and a half decibels in here as well, then we'll get rid of that clipping. Yeah, there we go. There we go, and then we don't need it going on that long. So let's actually just make it drag out and hit C here. And then delete that using the X key. Let's select everything and move it to the very beginning. So then we just can hit enter and it'll play it from the beginning. And then back to the video or yeah, super cool. Okay, so the next step in this process is to create an RGB splicing effect. And in order to do that, we need to nest these layers that we've edited. Now, it's very important that you have the edits the correct length that you want them. You can always go back and edit within the nested sequence, but it's easier just to get it right the first time. So select all three of them, right click on any of the three, and then go to nest name it what you want i'm just going to go um rgb split once you've nested the sequence now we can start adding effects to that sequence by going over to effects and typing in color then you're going to want to go down to color balance rgb drag and drop that onto the rgb split layer and then you're going to want to go over to the opacity settings and make sure that your blend mode is set to linear dodge or add. Then we're gonna scroll down and then for the red channel, we're gonna leave that at 100% and the other two for green and blue, we're gonna turn those down to zero. And there you go, your effect is done. Uh, I hope you got, I'm just <laughs> No, okay. We're just getting into the interesting part now. So now we're going to select the RGB split nested sequence, hit controller command C and then scroll to the very back and then hit controller command V to paste it and then paste it one more time. And now what we're gonna do is drag and drop each layer on top of the last, yep, like that. Doesn't have to be perfect because we're actually going to zoom in here. Zoom in really far. Okay. And basically we're going to drag this to where that cut is. And then we're gonna go to where those start and go with the W key, we're gonna scrub through two frames so one two then we're going to drag and drop this other layer to where that timeline indicator is and then go forward two more frames one two using the w key drag and drop there now we have these offset layers now we're going to select the rgb split above the first one that we did we're going to scroll down and change this red down to zero and this green to 100 then we're gonna go up to the top layer, scroll down, and make sure the red is set to zero, and the blue is set to 100, okay? And now by this point, you'll see that the color is all there. Now, it looks like a regular image, but if we zoom in here and go to full, you'll notice, and then if we scrub through it, there's a slight RGB split effect going on in my hand there. And it actually happens to every single part of this image that moves. It looks so good, man. You see it? Oh man, it looks so clean. Okay, now we're gonna hit the tilde key again to get out of there and actually go back down to half. Okay, now let's zoom out using the S key. And you can always clean this up by going in here and just clicking and dragging like that and then selecting all three holding down shift and then dragging to the beginning and that'll actually clean them up 
And if we go here and zoom in, we can clean this up as well by unselecting it, clicking and dragging, just like that. Very nice. Yep. And now if we hit enter, we have a nice RGB split image here. You see that? And then in between the transitions, we get a really cool RGB split where it morphs it. You see that? Oh, it looks so cool, man. All right, so now we're gonna create a new adjustment layer by going down to the new item bin down here, clicking on it and going adjustment layer. Let's make it the same size as whatever sequence that you made. Hit okay. Now click and drag that to the very top to create a new layer. And we're gonna drag that right about there. Drag it all the way to fit on top of there. And we're gonna apply the rest of the effects to the adjustment layer, just so we're not having to do it three times in a row. We're first gonna start with a warp, and we want the wave warp. So click and drag that onto the adjustment layer here. Now, if we select the adjustment layer and scroll down, we'll find the wave warp options. So the first thing we're gonna change is the wave type. We want that to be a square wave, and then we want the direction to be 180. And now we want the wave speed to actually go down to about 0.1. This is all up to you. Wave height is how much of the split is going on. This will make more sense if we actually extend the width. So I actually like maybe two on the screen at once, like up the width just a tad bit more. I'm going to make my width 750. You can make it what you want. It's all up to you, but I just want to show you guys what this looks like here. If we scroll that down a little bit, you see how it's starting to split the image. It's how the, the image is actually being split here. I'll keep it at about seven. And then you'll notice that it's clipping these outer areas here. So what we're going to want to do is go down to pinning and select that to all edges. And that will just fix up that image for us. And now if we hit enter, it's gonna render those files so we can actually watch it back. Okay, it finished. So let's hit the tilde key and watch it through. Hit enter. That's really nice. You see how that's going through there? And it's like got that line going through. It's all up to you how you wanna make it look, but I think that looks super clean, dude. Yeah. All right, so the next thing we want to do is add some noise here. So go up here and type in noise. And we're gonna just go down to noise and grain and let's just grab just the regular noise. I'm gonna make it about 20, just so you get enough of an effect on it. Yeah, that looks nice and clean. If you guys like it widescreen, you can keep it that way, but the way I've seen it and how other YouTubers have done it, I've seen them use a crop. So let's actually grab the crop here and drop it onto the adjustment layer. I'm actually gonna not do a legit 4.3 crop because I think it looks weird with the widescreen of 1080p. So I'm gonna just do a 10% crop and another 10% crop on the on the right side. So left and right, it just brings it in a little bit. That's not, a, I think it's about 15 is the legit 4.3 aspect ratio, but I think it's just too much for this effect. But I mean, it's really up to you guys. If you guys don't wanna crop at all, then do you dog do you okay the last part of the looks of this effect are going up to the color panel here that'll bring up the lumentary color panel and it automatically brings up the creative portion so you can go into the look and have LUTs I actually installed my LUT pack which is available at chuchacheckit.com slash downloads it's 10 bucks but you get all of the LUTs that you see in all of my videos it's not like necessary to buy if you guys don't want to what you can do is just go up to faded film and all you have to do really is just add some of that faded film to it but i have a lut that i love for a very clean faded look and that's my dragonborn lut you see how it adds that kind of like old style oh it looks so good like look at what it does to the shadows and it keeps those highlights yellow oh, just but it, it also keeps the blues looking kind of like a cyan -y blue it's like a worn orange teal look but with like faded shadows it looks so good you guys don't have to do that you can just go to the faded film and even if you want to add more faded film to it you can but like all the footage i take my dragonborn filter looks so good on all of it so i'm just going to keep it like that and now we can add the text on top of it we're actually going to go up to the effects portion again here and then we're going to go down to the the type tool at the very bottom going to select it and then just go to the very middle here and click and I'm just gonna type in your 
text makes it nice and easy and I'm gonna hit enter I'm gonna go the date today so 11 what's today 26 oh yeah it's my anniversary with my wife my six month anniversary of being married 11 26 um, 18 then I'm gonna do maybe like some other word I don't know like Instagram um, now I'm just gonna kind of stylize this a little bit so if I scroll down with this selected we can make this bottom font smaller here like that controller command a to select all the text and we're gonna go into the source text here and we're just going to find my favorite font that is free. I've been using it a lot for the website, for all the latest videos, the intros, everything I've been making. I'm, I'm just in love with this fat Frank. I don't know why I love it so much. And then I'm going to select the bottom layer there and I'm gonna make sure it's centered. And maybe I'll actually change the bottom text to something else, maybe like Felix titling. Yeah, that, that, that looks kind of cool. I'll just do Instagram, not, not slash Eli. Now if we scroll up, and we grab that text effect, make it bigger by grabbing the end of it and dragging out. Grab the move tool here and move it to the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect really. Maybe a bit higher though, cause it is locking to the middle here. Drag and drop the adjustment layer above here to create a whole nother layer. And then we can drag the text below. The really sucky part about Premiere is that it doesn't allow you to move layers itself which is pretty annoying, <laughs> but you can get around it just by creating a new layer and then just moving what you want up and then moving it to where you wanted it in the original place. Now let's zoom in here, make sure we're lined up perfect. Yep, we are. And the reason why I want the adjustment layer on top is because those lines will affect the text itself. Okay, let's check it out by going up to the preview window here and hitting the tilde key after selecting it. Now hit enter. Oh, man, I love that. Okay, guys, but with that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something new from this video. And if anything, you guys now know how to make a super clean title sequence. If you go through these steps, it probably will take me about two minutes total to make these title sequences. And then from there, I can just copy and paste this effect throughout the rest of the video. But with all that minimal work, it turns out to be so clean. It looks so good. And coupled with the low pass filter on the music and everything, it just looks so good. I hope you guys can take this and make tons of money from clients. Just squeeze the money out of them. <laughs> but anyway, make sure to go to chichacheckit.com to download this project file. If you want to just start with this template, you can. Also, don't forget to leave a like and fondle that notification bell after you subscribe because you don't want to miss a video. Come on, free tutorials, free everything. Come on. <laughs> but with that, guys, I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.